Good afternoon, Floss Tube. Pam, stitching between the lines. Today is April 30th. It's a Tuesday. I'm in a different spot. I'm <laughs> I have a work table space in our basement family room, so the stairs come down right here into the big room that I'm facing. <clears throat> and the light's good. It's the work table where I have my... Um, Kingdom of Books pattern set up, which um, I wasn't really going to show you because it hasn't changed or anything, but I could show you because I can just pick it up here. I'm not carrying it upstairs or whatever. Um, but anyway, the whole point of an April 30th video is, I'm sure you know, oh, I'm supposed to say the year, 2019, video maybe 56, something like that. I didn't look those things up. Um, anyway, Stitch Mania. I have to this point, not done Stitch Mania, not ever really thought I might plan for it and then didn't do it. I just didn't do it. I always, I have a tendency to have some big projects going and that's what I do, is those projects with a few little ones in between and maybe a monthly regular. The last couple of years, there's been something every month, whether it be, um, who were the historical Americans, that one. And then last year were the ornaments, the farmhouse ornaments. You all know what I mean. Anyway, um, and I just, the, those just kind of fill my time. So I don't want to start a whole lot of new things and have those kind of lingering. But somehow I managed to have lots of things in uh, my whip. So I decided this year, I didn't number them exactly correct, I think. So we'll see if I have if I'm up to 19. This year I'm going to pull all my whips together, which surprised me how many I had. Not that I forgot the whips per se, because when I pulled them out, I was like kind of like, oh yeah, forgot about this. Um, somehow I just never really had the desire to pull them out and work on them or whatever things happen. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go through my whips because some of them you haven't seen in a long time, if ever. I'm not really sure if I remember. Um, so anyway, I have piles here with me, and I'm going to try to be logical and one at a time about all the things and stay on track. So my list includes um, my whips, which are we really honest to goodness, wait, missing a whip? Right from the get-go, like right out of the gate. No, I know it's here. Seriously. I brought it down. It'll it'll present itself. So let's skip whips for right this second. We'll start somewhere different. We'll start here with a finish. Now this is a while it is a finish, I'm trying to do one a month. I started right out not managing that. So this is technically what I the third one I did. So that would have been March, finishing it here in way into April. Um, so this is January's wordplay. I I am kind of just reaching in the box, at the bag of the patterns and pulling one out and doing it. And so then I told myself I'm random. I'm doing them random. But then what I'm not seeing somewhere right around here is um, the one I started a few days ago, which is... The ape what would it should would have been the fourth is the fourth would have been the April one I should have started and finished in April. I feel like I'm gaining though because here it is April and I've actually started the one I'm supposed to do in April. So word plays technically are an ongoing whip. So they're a whip, uh, you know, it's gonna stay a whip for the rest of the year as long as I, you know, keep working away at it. Oh look, I showed my back. I uh uh, I don't know. Anyway, there's January. It's cute. Looks pretty much like what we expect. I didn't change a thing. Um, so let me find it a spot. And somewhere in my whip bin over here, I have the other parts of it that somehow... Oh, there we go. Sorry. It's not that far into the pile, so we will see that next 
uh, I, I, like I just said, I told myself I was um, randomly reach in the pack, pull one out, and do it. Well, I pulled out the next one. I'm trying to peel the price tag off. The next one I pulled out was May, and I said, mm, I don't think so. So I went back in and I picked February. I know they're in their bag to keep them protected. And February is ongoing. This needle is stuck. So I'll finish February as part of my whip mania, mania, whatever. <laughs> so this is technically what I put on my list is whip number one. And when I finish February and start another one, that doesn't count as a new start. That's part of the whole point of this conversation. Look my necklace shows through. I was trying to figure out what I was seeing. Um... So this is a whip. It's not going to stop being a whip through the through the month of May. So there's that. This is probably what I'll work on this afternoon. We'll see. That's part of my plan anyway. Into the pile. Uh, the biggest whip news is uh, Spirit of Christmas, whose pattern must still be in the box. Still got threads hanging all over it. Still not happy, not happy. I griped about it last video I made, and then I sat down and I worked some more, and honestly, I'm putting this up close. I'm not even gonna try to hide it so you can't even really see its problems. Look at, isn't that look horrible? I said, I thought I was doing really well. <sighs> Magnifier, mag, extra magnifying glasses when I work on it, and then I sat down and I, like I had been working and thinking I was doing pretty well and then I got, I don't know, I was working away in here and there were like two stitches that were wrong. Like not wrong stitches in the wrong spot, but stitches that didn't go in the right holes that I had done a previous day when I thought I was doing all right. I just thought this is just a hot mess. This is horrible. When the bulk of the white came together and looks like that, <sighs> who the heck, what the heck, why? So I decided I was done but uh, sorry I'm looking at the cat what are you doing nothing I decided I wanted to do it bad enough that I wasn't ditching it that quick so I went and got a piece of fabric and I saw it was somewhat limited to Hi. what the heck okay Whew. I thought I had ink on it and it's just fuzz I was limited to what fabric I had on hand that was size appropriate I'm trying to get this is a, I'm not having luck getting the cup maybe it's kind of a sky blue and I started it again so this part this I did in just a couple sittings it's actually 20 it's both of them are 28 so it's from here over to here in the red that I have done. It looks a lot smaller on this new light blue, but I think it's just because there's not all the other parts to it. So this one's out the door, going somewhere not in my whip pile. So that's whip number two, right? Spirit of Christmas, wordplay, Whip three is a whip that also there's no chance it will be done. It hasn't been worked on in a very long time. It is the Farms of Hawk Run Hollow. I haven't touched it. I worked on it last year, maybe last summer. My goal initially is just to finish this box. That's really what I'd like to do. I've been saying that every time, is to finish this box. And... Uh, I got it out to work on it like last fall or something and something I think my mind wasn't appropriately on it because I'm looking at the list I looked at the list for the symbol of the thread color and I didn't have the color in my box my box that's in the bag box of colors so I looked at the second symbol that was um, the right next symbol to work on and I didn't have that color. And I thought, well, what's that all about? So I put it away. 
And then I don't know at what point I realized I had looked at the NP, you know, the needlepoint silks number, not the DMC number for the symbol. I don't know. Like I said, clearly it was not meant to be worked on because that was stupid. But this is how far I, I got last year. No rush. No, I'm not feeling any compulsion to think that this needs to be done anytime soon. It would be nice if I got the box done, uh, that first big box. Kathleen, Kathleen's Trodden Trail, Kathleen of Kathleen's Trodden Trail, sorry, talked about uh, doing her Hawk Run Hollow along with a friend like one day a week, right? Is that what it was, Kathleen? And I said, so if you really do that, tell me. Uh, let's virtually do it together. And I don't mean that we even need to FaceTime or anything even close to that. It would be just kind of fun and maybe inspirational if I knew that other people were working on theirs like every Wednesday or whatever day. And then that became my day to work on it. Would I create that on my own? Probably not. Uh, you know, and then just the simplicity of posting a Instagram picture or something of where I started, where I got to in that day each week might make it might make me pull it out the thing that makes me not do these kind of things is when I'm working on something I don't want to give up time on it no matter what unless I decide to get to a certain point and then put it away I don't want to lose time I don't want to put it down to do even one day on anything else so that kind of that's on me clearly but um, I need a little bit of inspiration I guess so that was number three the fourth one of my whips uh, that will be worked into my May version of Mania is Baby It's Cold Outside. And when I pulled this out, I actually, this is one of the ones I forgot was underway. I was just sort of digging through all my, I have, you know, those wheeled carts everybody, oops, talks about from um, Ikea. I have three of those and one upstairs by my stitching chair and two of them downstairs. And I was looking to see what was in the upstairs one, what was in my various bags, and this was in there. And I thought, oh, huh, look at that, I forgot about it. I, it really doesn't even have that far to go. So this is a whip that, I mean, it's more than one day's work for sure. But it will get some attention during Stitch Mania. And, you know, it'll make some progress, and maybe I'll do it some of the other days during Stitch Mania. I'm not doing 31 anythings. Um, what I'm doing <laughs> is all my whips, which I think I have 10 of, and then I'll add nine new starts. So that's what I'm working my way up to, is one day on each whip, one day on each new start, and then whatever in between, either pick up one of the whips on days that I start something and don't want to keep going on just that day or that I'm close to finishing. So I'll work a little bit on one whip and some more on one of the prior whips. So there's that one. Baby, it's cold outside. Another whip. Now this whip, the picture to Spirit of Christmas. I knew it would turn up. Uh, this one I have actually never shown you. And the reason is, is that you can't get it. And so I kind of sort of a little tiny bit felt bad that if I showed it, I'm not really sure I have a picture. Let me just rifle around for a little bit. Um, if I showed it, it would be sort of an unfair. Oh, there it is. Um, last year when I went to StitchCon, um, uh, Julie McConnell of Reflections and Framing, uh, she had recently shown this on one of her videos as her design that um, she had done for her winter retreat. And it's the stitching is the trees and the snowflakes. You put it, you fit it into this little dome dish. And this was a sculpted little um, statue, whatever, that goes in the middle. So she, when of course many of us there loved it and wanted it, and she said, well, if she got the right number of people to make it equitable, she would release it again. And that involved contracting with the person who had made the little snowman and getting them to make more. So that's not going to be something that she's going to be able to do again, I don't think. So I ordered the kit. This is the beginning of the snowy ground that the snowman stands in the middle of. And I actually had a pretty substantial start on it. 
I don't know. Clearly, I wasn't thinking about it because I did it in the wrong color the first time through. A little symbol reading error on my part, I believe. So that is one of my whips, a neglected whip, mostly because I had to take a whole big chunk out. And I look at all four of those pine trees and I think, oi, 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 yikes. Uh, so it's cute. It's a whip worthy of my attention. We got the dome things um, when we were at StitchCon last year. We were, <laughs> I don't have a um, Hobby Lobby anywhere near me. I mean, it's like two hours away. That's not anywhere near. There's another one maybe an hour and a half away, but certainly not in the direction I go. So I didn't have a chance to um, go to Hobby Lobby and look for it. So we were ordering them online. We were doing stuff. We were doing stuff. So anyway... That snow globe is one of my whips. Another one, I started this last fall when we were on our, I think when we were on our vacation, maybe a little bit before we left. I can't, honestly can't swear what I did. Make sure I've got the right one. Um, this one, this is it. Last year I talked a bunch about the postcard patterns um by open road abode i'm sorry and i just love the whole concept of these postcard patterns and my cats are fighting uh i just thought they were so cool and i talked about them on one of my videos and people were contacting the designer um melody gilmore to see where they could find them and so she traced backwards where was everybody learning about her patterns to me and she discovered <laughs> me and she sent me one of at least one of every one of her postcard patterns which was very cool I took the took them to StitchCon with me last year and gave away because actually there were multiples of a lot of them gave away bunches of them because they're just so cool so I started Yellowstone and the truth here's what it looks like and on the other side of the postcard is the pattern. So I just think they're so cool. So here it is. The first postcard pattern I did um, right after. Or my friend sent it to me. That was my introduction to it. I uh, whipped up in like two days. Like an evening and an evening. It was so quick. This one's taken me forever for some reason. I So I have the trailer, the camper done. I don't have the pine tree. I, I have a lot to go. One of the things that's semi sort of stopping me is I wanted to try this DMC variegated, which I think I, I like it for everything else. I'm not sure how I feel about it for the buffalo. But I don't know if I want to do the buffalo in black or just brown. I think I need to find like just a dark brown. I don't really know. We saw buffalo everywhere. We saw tons of buffalo. So I'd like to do the buffalo right. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know. So I haven't really kind of, I kind of get stumped on what to do. I really don't want to do something I'm going to have to pull out because I don't like it. So I think that's what keeps just sort of stopping me in my tracks. But anyway, this is another whip that I will work on one of the days. Maybe I'll make a decision. Maybe I'll finish it because it's not that complicated of a pattern. And another whip. Let's see what's in here. This is so close to not being a whip. I have had this pattern. Um, Country Cottage Needleworks Liberty Lane. All of a sudden we're seeing it crop back up. But I have it. I've had this kitted forever. It was a gift at some point when it was new out and with the pillow and buttons. So I have that. So I'm staying true to the colors of the pattern because of the pillow. But a lot of people have darkened these up um, into a more traditional red, white, and blue. But the reason I say it's barely a start is it is virtually like one, let me turn it over, it's upside down, one day's work on a wee little bit of the middle town home. And I like it. I like it just fine. 
I don't know why it's just not a whip. I like anything with bunting. There's checkerboard down there. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty, pretty. Um, so I'm pulling that out and putting it in the whip rotation for May. Um, what was, I feel like I was going to say something else about it, but now I've forgotten. Anyway, there it is. Into a bag, along with some thread that's trying to escape. Another whip. Sometimes they're whips, as you know, because they're problems. Problem children. I started this, actually, when I was at the very first ever Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat. And I started this because, well, besides because it's cool looking, um, I thought it would be big enough for me to work on without a magnifier. If there were times when I was traveling when I could work without a magnifier... And at some point, I think after I got back, maybe I put it on these stretcher bars because my fingers weren't big enough to like hold it in my hand and stitch reaching into the middle. And at some point I discovered there's a mistake in that truck somewhere. There's a mistake missing. So the truck isn't as long as it should be. I obviously right now don't remember where and where that is. And then I started to wonder if I really got it centered. Because that's the end of the truck. Let's look. End of the bumper right there. And then the front bumper, well, it has a few stitches out. Maybe I'm centered. I don't know. I just remember thinking, shoot, I'm going to do all this work and it's not going to fit. So anyway, I'm pulling it out to be a whip. I guess at this point of pulling it out to be a whip will be the deciding time to make sure this is going to fit on that piece of perforated paper because it is as small as it is, four and a half by four and a half-ish. I know it says five by five, but I, whatever. It's full coverage with stitching and beads. So that's a lot of work to then discover it's not going to fit. So, anyway, I'm going to make an effort. One more go to see if it makes any progress. So, it's on my whip list. Let's see. Oh, this is a good one. And I, I get this one out every now and again when I just need a little prairie schooler fix. So, it's there's no reason why it's not being worked on. It's not a problem child or anything. That's my word of the day, problem child. Because we're visiting all my old problem whips, of course. So this is, I put this piece of fabric in the bag eons ago, kitted with the appropriate threads for this. And then after I started working on it, and I really could have been very random about my fabric selection and what was piece was available. The piece isn't necessarily big enough to add the border. I mean, what is that one stitch? Hardly a huge border. So I may end up with that on there. But the thing with a boxed in border like that is, is if you don't do exactly right in your finishing, you've got that line that goes down and across that shows what you've done. So anyway, I just love a prairie schooler. So there he is. I think all the houses are done and now I'm starting to do some of the things that lead up to the road. And then the trees, to me, it doesn't feel like it'll be a huge, big problem. One of these I did as an ornament a few years back. I think it's this one. I honestly can't say for sure. It was several years ago. So, love it. I love the simplicity of the simplest thread. I mean, there's just like, you know, DMC uh, 3777 is the red and that's it and it i don't know there's something so classic about it so that's a whip i'd love to pull that one out at the end of lots of days when i've started or worked on other whips put in a tree or two and it'll be done but we'll see another whip 10 of them folks there's 10 of them which for me is kind of a lot um this no this is one of those phrases i use that <laughs> I'm going to claim ownership. An accidental start. An accidental start last year. I had this out not that long ago because I worked on it. All the things that I have said before. I wanted to try gritting. It was not a disaster. It took a lot longer than one would hope. <coughs> Excuse me. But the pattern 
<clears throat> shows those like yeah, I'm sorry it shows that like echoing of a duplicate row when where the page splits and then but the grid lines don't don't um, compensate for that so the grid lines only work for the first half of the picture but geraniums are my absolute favorite summer flower so but I actually absolutely hate uh, stitching flowers I hate all the fussiness of one stitch, half stitch, another stitch, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, all the flowers are done and outlined. The leaves are not done all the way. I can see over here, like, I don't have that done, the leaf that sort of turns. But that's well underway. I don't, I have lots of the background. This is just a half stitch with, like, one thread. Uh... And then I'm really hoping it speeds up when I come down here. But anyway, this is an accidental start. I started it last year. My husband was away for like 10 days, so I had lots of stitching time. And I stitched a whole lot on um, Independence Hall. What is it? What's it called? I lost it. Anyway, I was tired of it one night, and I pulled this out. No plans. It's just like I need something different. Reach in, grab something, do it. Accidental start. Happens to me about twice a year. So far this year it hasn't started. It hasn't happened yet. Look at that. Uh, I started. I did a lot of things. I was like when I was in Florida, I did a lot of smalls. So I had a lot of opportunities to start things. Anyway. Oh, this is not a whip. This is in this. Oh, did I go through ten? Country Still Life just showed you. Farms of Hawker and Hollow, Prairie Schooler, Liberty Lane, Snow Globe, Mill Hill, Baby It's Cold, Yellowstone, Spirit of Christmas, and Wordplay. That was it. Ten. Look at me go. And if anybody's paying attention, you maybe sort of saw a whip missing. Did ya? Did anybody even think that Quaker Christmas 2 wasn't in my whip list? Whip, whip parade? That's because it's not. It's not anymore a whip. Honestly, look at that baby. That is big. Um, just this morning, I finished um, one, two, three. For the last couple days, I've been doing this corner. And I plowed through. I had kind of had the outer shape of most of them done. Just I wanted to see everything fit. I finished this one, and then I was going to finish this one. And then I started doing where I was, like, separating the six strands into three, you know, um, threading three needles, which is what I did throughout the whole thing. So I only had to, you know, thread needles once every third length-ish kind of thing. Made things move right along. So then I started going like one length, one length, one length, and just kind of doing this circle thing. And I got to the point where I was separating my last six strands and onto three needles, and I got so excited because I knew every one of those lengths was going to finish one of the designs. So I finished them this morning and just actually after lunch finished the words. I don't usually stitch in the morning, but um, various this is and that's have me home today, not doing what I usually do some of these days. So I finished that, which means tonight on the 30th prior to Mania, May 1st starting, I will prob I'll work on one of my existing whips, which as you see, there's 10 of. Um, I'm thinking it's wordplay, just because that would be kind of nice to get as close as I can to an April finish so I can get a May finish on the fifth one and then be on track so I can mess it all up somewhere else. So that was an exciting one. Um, so now I can go into my starts, and it was hard. At first I started going through my bins. I have these big, like right here is a big basket of project bags. I have a two of those, not long. This is the only longer burger one, but the other one's a big wire. And then in my three-tiered trays, there's bags of things I was considering stitching or whatever, however they land where they land. So I thought I would go through and pick out 19 things. It seemed reasonable. There's 19 kits here somewhere amongst all the things. But every now and then I'd open a bag and it would really be a whip. So it went into the whips, and I, I just, that's when I decided I needed to do Mania where there were 19 projects underway, a combination of whips and new starts. 
um, there was a new start that I'm denying as a new start, not new start, but there's a whip that I'm denying even counts as a whip. And that is like Mermaids of the Deep, the two of them. I started, you know, there's a, two, a dozen, two dozen stitches in there. I, I just, I'm not feeling uh, like I want to work on something that complicated on, in this like sort of forced march sort of way. And I'm also not counting as a whip. Um, I'm going to reach over you, okay? So just hold on. I'm not counting Kingdom of Books as a whip. It's on. I had to buy 36 count or 36 inch uh, stretcher bars. Well, there went the, pat the picture. And I was trying not to show you the pattern. So out of the screen it goes. That's the progress, which is very limited progress since last time around. Isn't it beautiful? It's so pretty. I love blue and blue and brown together. It's so pretty. So I will sit that over here. Excuse me for a minute. While I pick up the picture. So I have done the book. We've seen that. And I'm, it, last time I was, I had a lot of the brown outlined and up into this peak. And now I'm starting with some of the finer detail in here. That's a really cool pattern. That really is a cool pattern. So anyway, okay. So, my first new start, which I keep circling around and never talking about, uh, will be Bent Creek's Summer Soapbox. I did Winter Soapbox last year. This time last year, I was picking it up at the Framers. So, I don't always know what my fabric is. Picture this plus, doubloon, 28 count. Pretty brown. I go on these, like, bouts of kitting things up. So the reason there could be conceivably 25 things kitted up easily, I quit counting, um, is because I, go, number one, go on about. <laughs> number two, I'm going to do a whole bunch of kitted up things like I did when I went to Florida in the winter. I just kitted up eight whatever things, took them and finished, I don't know what, four of them maybe, five of them, five, I think five. So then those projects come back here and they're in the waiting lit pile. The other thing that happens is when a store has a sale, like um, Needlecraft Corner, when they have their Picture This Plus sale and or their Floss All 25% off, I will go pull out patterns that I really want to be in my lineup somewhere. And I'll go through my inventory and I'll figure out what I need for threads. Um, and that is really how things get kitted, threads and fabrics both. I will do that. And then, of course, I can't stitch as fast as I can plan. So that's the first one, Summer Soap Box. The second one is um, a Sue Hillis. I said at least a year ago, if not longer, that I needed to always have a Prairie Schooler in the works and a Sue Hillis in the works. And I got this one out to start one day. And uh, this is some MCG Even Weave. I coffee tea dyed myself. I don't know, that piece is kind of small. Sorry. Let me calculate mathematically here for half a minute. Well, it goes in an 8 by 10 frame. Seven by nine if it's on 28 pounds. Let me use my handy dander dandy attached to my desk ruler. Almost 12 by 12 and a half. It will work. I don't believe this is a piece that's going off to a framer or anything. I need to... Um, I'm just grabbing a clip. Excuse me while I do some work. And clipping what I have just determined to be the top. This one will really be a cute one just to finish in a Priscilla, Priscilla fine, right? I don't know. I got it out one day to start it. And I just couldn't bring myself to start. Like, I tend to start in the middle for whatever reason. I don't know what I'm doing. I just looked at all that blue. I think I was going to start in a corner, and I thought, I couldn't bring myself to stitch all that blue right then and there that day. This is really old. I don't know how really old, but the pattern is like the lines look hand done. Almost. 
Okay. Let me see. Yeah, there's a little charm, but it's just not it's sort of as sophisticated as we're accustomed to anymore. 1997. So yes, it's over. Tw it's 22 years old. Still, it works. I really like Christmassy, wintry, that kind of hot cocoa kind of thing. So that's one of my whips. Another whip will be whip. Sorry, start new start. Oh my gosh! Every single summer, I swear to God, I pull this one out and then I don't do it. I have no idea why. There is no reason why this is not getting stitched. Sometimes I have no. Honest to goodness, I, I believe there's beads in that pattern. I'm not sure there's beads in this kit. Or, I kitted it. That's my stuff. I must have white beads somewhere. <sighs> Seriously. There is no good reason. This is another one I bought just not that long ago. Last year, maybe. Probably, yeah, probably last year. No good reason why it wasn't started, because I love it. Is the cutest thing. Ink circles. So stinking cute. I mean, come on, I just rocked out that Quaker in three months, right? I started that Quaker Christmas. I started on Christmas. I didn't work on it while I was in Florida. So that was a month off. Didn't work on it after I got home. Two weeks I was home, and then I was in Hawaii, and then I was seriously jet lagged. So there was some time in. Like four and a half months. So there's about probably six weeks I didn't work on it. So anyway, I think it took three, three months. I don't keep track like that. So if I can rock that thing out, I can do this. Holy cow. It's on a piece of 32 count. Picture this plus earthen. Earthen with that ever so slightly pink look to it. I thought would be cute with the called for threads. Like, because some of them are these colors. Glazed carrots. And Tennessee red clay. I liked it. I liked it. I'm not pulling out all the colors. We're not seeing it all here. You'll see it when I work on it. That's one of my planned starts. Another one is another one of those seriously, why didn't you do this? It would take you a day. Um, watering can crow. Some unidentified piece of even weave white ish. Honestly, I mean, part of what I when I picked some of my whips are big, so some of my um, starts are small because for that very reason, a good balance is what I was looking for. And then this, this is beautiful. A Rovaris, Rovaris. Um, well, I think it's called Beach. I don't see anything that contradicts that on the front. Oh, yeah, it's, it's called Beach. Isn't that pretty? All the beachy things. Love all the beachy things. I'm just checking my thread selection in here. Seriously, no overdyes? I wonder if I'm missing something. No. I believe this is also on Earthen. It's a little bit of pink. So, I don't know. I can pretend I could knock that out in a couple days, but at least it will get a start. It will get a start. It will see the light of day. Another start is Jardin Privé's um, Marquis. And, again, some Quakers. I just think she's so beautifully, elegantly beautiful. Um... At the first stitch con I ever went to, I um I don't want to rat anybody out for letting me see their stuff first, Michelle. Um, but she had the DMC linen threads, right? Is that yep the linen threads? So I am going to I think there's only about four colors in here. Yep, I'm going to pick the four colors out of the linen thread pack here, and stitch them. Would that be cool? I think so. Again, this one's been planned on for a while. Just never started. It's in a little 
Blue Q bag. I discovered Blue Q years ago, and so I have a whole collection, not a whole huge collection, of bags and various bags, and they're so cute. I don't care that the stuff doesn't really fit. I want to use it. And finally, my last one is another one that there is no good reason that it hasn't been done, except that every time I look at the pattern, I can't decide what to do. So this um, is out of <laughs> the Cross Stitcher magazine. I think it was two years ago it came out. Let me look closer. June 2016, so three years. And right away, I just loved it. Right away, I worked up one of these strawberry patterns. I worked up one of these pieces. It's called Berry Sweet in this magazine. And there's all these. Part of why I can't figure out what to do is I like them all. So what I did with mine is I changed the thread colors to match what I had by way of, first of all, here it is. It. Can I get it? Uh, threads. But the idea is I have this dish full of, well, it's full of strawberries now that it sits with. It's the dish I, I got this dish at um, Salvation Army for 50 cents maybe. And it is, I looked it up online by brand, it is from William, Sono William Sonoma. So I changed the colors to match the dish. And so anyway, I wanted to do a second piece using the same beaded edge, the same shades. And so I'm saving in my bag all the threads so I can make sure I match the colors. And I just can't decide what to do. I still don't know what I'm doing. Maybe this one, but then I look and see how cute that one would be. And I really like that one and I like that one. So I really don't know. I'm really stumped. I think if I did this one, maybe I'd leave the words out and I would just make it square with the red and white checked border. Square-ish. I don't think it'll be true on square. It's going to be a start. I'm going to have to send, focus on one of the things. I think partly, I probably have enough fabric to do two of them. Well, really, when you do the beaded edge, you really need to have the same, the way that you stitch around in the same size. So I actually have fabric only to do in the same fabric one more. So I don't know. I want to do them all. I could do them all, but, you know, time, space, whatever. So there are my nine starts along with my ten whips from Stitch Mania 2019. So, where do we go from there when you have 19 whips? I, my plan is, I was thinking, like, every year I think I'll do it, and then I don't. So I thought, well, if I just start, these are my 19 things. For however many of them are still left by next May, I'll have slots to fill in unless I've started other whips, which I'm sure I'll start other whips between now and then and see how they work. So we'll see how that works. We'll see how it works. So my initial plan is for every two things I finish, I can start one more, one different, one, one new start. With the exception of, well, first of all, wordplay is going to be a year long. So even if I finish a wordplay, I got to start another wordplay. The other exception will be Prairie Schooler. That's going to be a one-for-one. One. I'd like to always have a Prairie Schooler going. So when I finish that Prairie Schooler Christmas farm, tree farm, I can start another Prairie Schooler. And also the Sue Hillis. When I finish the Sue Hillis, I have a nice collection of Sue Hillis patterns. I've done a couple of them. They're Christmas. I'm thinking about... I, both I'm pretty, there's two I think and they're both Christmas so they're put away with Christmas things uh, I and I really like I like her traditional colors I like a lot of them are um, Christmas I like to do Christmas but there's others that I have that are not so those two are one for one finish one can start another from that particular designer everything else I'm going to try to do finish 
two, start one, so that I will narrow back down to less than 19. And then come Stitch Mania 2020, I can, will have some, be able to start a bunch of things all at once. I'm not holding myself to any kind of rigid schedule ruling. I would like to start in the month of May the nine things and work on the 10 whips. We're traveling a bit in May. We have two long weekend trips planned, so it's not going to be a first through the 19th kind of thing. There's going to be some time in the middle where um, I will probably not be able to work on anything. I mean, I can take some stuff and see how it works in the hotel room, but it could be by the time we're back in a hotel room, I won't really want to drag all that crap out. Um, crap, you know, supplies, a lamp, the works. Um, anyway, so we'll see how we do. We'll see. I don't know if it'll be the end of May before I do another video because maybe there will be a start. Oh, that's the other thing. I, I'm not going to rule out that there could be accidental starts. That's it happens. That's in my world. That's allowed. <laughs> There's no judgment. Like I said, I'm claiming it. I coined that phrase. I think that to myself that I've had accidental starts and somebody made a comment about it. Having never heard that phrase, but um, yeah, because I made it up. Um, anyway, so there's that uh, because there's, you know, new things come. Like, for example, finally, my last of my market releases came. Now, this should be no surprise that me, the quilter, got this pattern. And that me, the quilter, would start this pattern. And then I had to get the third, had to, had, to get the third of the tree farm. And I don't really care for this tree. I might be looking for a way to make that tree look a little different. <laughs> but ironically, we've had trees that are like this kind of massive size. Like, you need a ladder just to get anywhere near the top we often generally we have a tree that's too tall to reach the top but we had one one year our living room is two-story like peaked ceiling <laughs> we one year had a biggest tree you've ever seen i also got this one because it's cute all those little chicks and he i don't care what he's doing with that pipe blowing bubbles whatever it's not going to be in his mouth when i stitch it farm fresh christmas trees i finally bought a twin peak primitives pattern um I believe this is a salt box house and about two miles away from here there used to be the house is still there a red salt box house that had a Christmas tree farm and for a couple years we got our Christmas tree there and then the house was sold and the new owners did not continue the Christmas tree farm so as soon as I saw that I knew I had to have it because that is real a real thing to me I got a fourth of the Button Up Birds by Victoria Sampler. Um, it was one of the ones I wanted and was gone when I did order the three that I showed last time. And part of it is I love the house finches. I love the house finches. They sound so pretty. They just have such a nice sound. Um, I, they build their nests in my hanging baskets usually, which I don't necessarily mind. Uh, for a while there, I was trying to keep them away. Be well, partly because I feel really bad that when they make a nest in there and then I reach up to water the flowers, I scare the babies. But I've gotten better at really checking. And because they're so protected that close to the house, like we watched when they do it on my screened-in porch, the basket, you can, if you're up on the porch looking out, you can see into the basket. Um, the one mother raised five babies in there one year. She had that many eggs and they all survived. They're all protected and up close to the house. So anyway, and then of course a robin. Who doesn't like a robin? And then, this is really, I think, what held up my, um, my market order was these two new releases, which I have always, since they started designing, and seeing them, Madame Lafie, I've liked her patterns, and I've just never bought one. So I bought two because they were so stinking pretty. So let me see what it's called. Oh, the beach. It's called the beach. And then the other one is Jingle Bells. Isn't that the cutest thing? So pretty. Love those. 
So, haul, if I'm going to call it that. I really don't like that phrase. Um, and really, after that, I'm not. I mean, I look online and I look at things. And the other night, I was just flipping through online. And I just went, ugh, I am so tired of the same thing. Same thing, different designer, same thing. Which is fine, because it's not like I have a shortage in my house, right? Right. And then, finally, one last thing. This is a long video. It's going to take me forever to get it uploaded. Forever. I brought vintage because I were downstairs and a lot of the vintage is downstairs. I couldn't, I looked and looked and couldn't find the name. Somebody will tell me. This is one of the Bent Creek snappers and these patterns came one a month. Um, and then you got, you could buy the border pack. Um, it's cute. It's fun that I can get it out and fill a spot no matter what time of year it is. I can put this up. And then if it's a holiday when I have another piece I want to hang, like Christmas or whatever, I can put it away. So there's that one. It's cute. I did it in, what, 2005. I remember, what I, I remember where I was when I was working on part of this. So that's kind of a memory, good or bad, I'm not sure. And then this one, you, I, you don't really see this one. I, I don't know. When I, the minute it came out, I loved it. I did it. It's just 2015. This one, I had to look it up. I, and it is done by somebody I've never heard of, Tumbleweeds 3. I looked on ABC Stitch to see and just put in um, American Frontier. And this pattern came up. And so then when I clicked on Tumbleweeds, they had zero other in inventory by them. So I didn't go any further than that to see if they have any other designs. But this is very much in keeping with... Um, a style we see now that I, I do really like, the Americana, the front, American Frontier. And it was really a quick, it worked up quick. Love doing this kind of border. So that is American Frontier, just like it says, by Tumbleweed. Tumbleweeds, it has an S, it's all one word. And then a numeric three, Tumbleweeds three. I don't know. And then this one, this is a golden oldie. I did it in 2001, told in the garden, the country store, love it, it hangs in my laundry room, which kind of fits that sort of look. Um, uh, Nell of Little House, Little Yellow House Crafts started it, and then, like me, I thought it worked up really quick. She worked on it for a little while, and then I think gave it away, or something like that. So, I... That year is 2001. I don't know if I said that or not. Um, 2001, my youngest would have been five that year. Um, so this was very likely just the thing, kind of thing I would just stitch on in the afternoon when, you know, kids were getting home from school or, you know, when you're just like your presence is in the house. Or, you know, I don't know. Shoot, by then I was working two jobs. I don't know where I had the time and had three kids. So whatever. It got stitched. It's a favorite on Ada, right? Yeah, it is. Can't really, really remember. I didn't really get super into linens at that point. That, you know, those were the days I could buy fabric in a pattern and have the DMC and spend, you know, $10 and have a craft that kept me busy for months. So, still a favorite. Still love it. So there's the vintage -y things for today. So there. I've been really enjoying um, watching everybody's mania plans. People have very similar um, styles in pulling in the whips, whether it be their mania things from last year and adding new things into the slots that they freed up or whips, you know, like they have, or just maybe a start a week or something like that, which is all very reasonable. <laughs> Very reasonable. Nine new starts. Um, not as many as I thought because I was surprised myself with some whips, but that's okay. Some of my starts are really small. So we'll see by the end of May if I still have 19 whips. I shouldn't, but I don't know. Whatever. No pressure. So anyway, there we go. It's a, what day did I say? A Tuesday afternoon. My husband plays golf tonight, so I have uh, no dinner obligations. My... <laughs> Oldest daughter turned 28 yesterday, um, which is really weird because I'm only 36, so 
I don't know how that happens that she ages at a much faster rate than me. But um, I don't know. There's something about the oldest one turning an age. <laughs> That's the child that turned you into a mother. So, you know, I'm always... It's all my kids. Whatever age they turn, I'm always, like, shocked. So, anyway, uh, we took her out to dinner. But my other daughter and I spent Saturday making um, cake pops to bring to her. We met, we met at a restaurant last night. So, we took her cake pops for dessert. And I had tried cake pops years ago when there wasn't, like, Pinterest and uh, videos to watch. And I felt they were a fail. Like, they didn't freeze set up enough to even hold a stick let alone not fall apart when you put them in the dip candy dip candy melt so we read I read up on doing it like okay here we go I have a very busy weekend ahead of me last weekend I'm saying on like Thursday night I say to my daughter I text her I'm like have you ever made cake pops she's the creative baker and out of any of my kids and um she said no and I said I think I'm gonna make we're gonna make them I think I'm gonna make them to take you know to the birthday supper and uh, I'm making a list, and I'm watching a video, and I'm learning about it. And I go to the store on s Friday morning and get the supplies at Joanne Fabrics, like the candy melts and the sticks and whatever. And and so I bake the cakes Saturday morning. I knew from watching further information on Pinterest that I needed something. So on Saturday, I went back to the grocery store and got that. And then after lunch on Saturday, we started working on making them. And I sent, my husband was going to Lowe's and I said, oh, we need, I didn't know how many cake pops one cake mix would make. So after we discovered that, I said, when he's going to Lowe's, I said, could you go into Joanne Fabrics and get more sticks? Okay. So then he's on his way to jo to town and I said, I sent him a text. I'm like, and we need more candy melts because we, again, didn't really know how much we'd be using. And I sent him a picture and get two bags, whatever. So then I call him because we decided the color that we I told him to get didn't melt as nicely as different color did. And so anyway, he brings back more supplies. We make them. They actually turned out really pretty cute and fun. You know, we had... Tons of them so we could select the right amount. And we made them into a bouquet in a box. Like I put styrofoam in it. The waitress at the restaurant was very impressed, thought maybe I was a professional, <laughs> which was very comical. Um, we could do it again next, we could do it again, we would do it different, and it wouldn't take quite so much. I think we would forego the sticks, and we would make more like just a candy, like bomb, bonbon that you could pick up, because we spent a lot of time trying to prevent drips off the stick, or a lot of time. We'd used up all the places we had to stick them in styrofoam until they firmed up, waiting around until we could make some more. So anyway, so we did that. So again, here I am. I have a busy weekend ahead because we were having a party on Sunday, totally unrelated to the birthday. So I create myself a job that will make me spend all Saturday baking and in the kitchen so that on Sunday morning, I could do the same thing all over again, because Sunday at 1 o'clock, we have a house full of company coming for an afternoon gathering party. So no stitching went on all weekend, but it's funny how you think to yourself, look, I'll do that. I have some free time. Not so much. But anyway, we celebrated a birthday. My husband's birthday is coming. My anniversary is coming. Mother's Day is coming. Some other things like that. So we have two long weekends ahead in the month of May, and that really only leads into summer. We're always busy all summer long. We do spend a lot of time doing outdoor sports and things, sports. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Water. We like the water. We have a lot of water toys, so we spend a lot of time on a boat or whatever, just, you know, and my husband plays golf. So I like the golf evenings because then I can not fix supper. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know. Enough of all of that. Summer's coming. It snowed on Saturday, but I swear, overnight it'll be like summer. That's how it happens around here. We don't we don't think a whole lot of spring. It just sort of glosses past us. So, anyhow. Happy Stitch Mania.